right now, this former Oregon Ducks football player is on the run. Colt Lyurla escaped from custody in Washington County. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Brenda Braxton. Lyurla was serving time for drug possession. KGW's Art Edwards joins us live from the Washington County Community Correction Center where the escape happened. Art, there's now a warrant for his arrest. Yeah, that's right. Of course, they do want to catch up with him and put him back into custody. He was at the center of the correction center that's right here behind me in Hillsborough, right across the street from the Washington County Jail. He started his six-month sentence on April the 26th, told the escape happened late yesterday afternoon. The staff got an alarm about a window open and discovered the escape in progress. Now, Lyerla was sentenced to 18 months probation back in March for a felony heroin conviction. He was arrested just a couple of weeks after the sentencing for using counterfeit money at several conditions. Convenience stores. He pled guilty and got the six month sentence. Lyerla was a highly regarded football player at Hillsboro High School, went on to the University of Oregon. He left the Oregon Ducks program during the 2013 season, pleaded guilty to cocaine possession in December of 2013, and has had more legal issues since then. As you mentioned right at the beginning of this, a warrant has been issued for his arrest, and at this point, they have not been able to locate him. Back to you. Art, thank you very much. We'll keep everyone posted if we learn anything new. The guy didn't even attempt to stop at all. That woman watched as someone hit a man on Southeast Division Street this morning. This is a hit and run, and we learned just a few hours ago the victim didn't survive. KGW's Tim Gordon joins us from 82nd and Flavelle this afternoon. Tim, the man was just trying to cross the street. Now, Brenda, he was just south of the intersection with Flavelle. He was coming from the motel over here where he was staying. The flowers here on the sidewalk are for that man who did not quite make it across the street. The flashing lights of emergency vehicles. First responders came to try and save a life. The man was alive when the ambulance took him away, but he didn't make it. We were informed by the hospital that the uh, pedestrian uh, did not survive the crash. Traffic investigators put together the pieces of what happened. They say the impact threw the man from the street to the sidewalk. A security camera at the motel caught the whole thing and left no doubt. From the video, it looked like the pedestrian saw the car coming, tried to hurry across the street, just didn't make it. The vehicle uh, struck the pedestrian and kept going. From Sky 8, you can see the area the driver left, going south on 82nd. The car is a gray or dark colored small sedan that never stopped. When I approached him, he had his right hand out and I took his hand. This woman named Tamara saw the whole thing happen. Then she went to help. I was just letting him know that it's okay. I, I'm here. You're not, you're not alone. Everything's going to be okay. Hang in there. And later this morning, Tamara left some flowers on the sidewalk where she comforted the man in his final hour. A really a traumatic thing for her. She's thinking about the man's family and the driver as well, she hopes that he does the right thing, as she put it, and turns himself in. Police also want to talk, obviously, to the driver, but also to the driver of a red truck that came up just behind the incident and kept going. They'd like to talk to that person as a possible witness. Brenda, back to you. Can't imagine. Tim, thank you. You can expect some traffic delays on I-5 this weekend. The northbound lanes between the Markham and the Fremont bridges close tonight at 10 o'clock. They'll reopen Monday morning. Crews are making repairs under the Burnside Bridge. Okay, this project is almost done, but you can expect one more closure next weekend. Also, drivers can expect a lane closure on the Hawthorne Bridge starting tomorrow. The westbound outside lane will close from 6 a.m. until early afternoon for repaving. And then starting on Monday, lanes will close so that bridge can be inspected. That'll happen between 10 a.m. and the evening commute. One lane will stay open in each direction. Well, let's head outside for a second. Um, not exactly sunny and 80 anymore. That view is pretty gray. And just in time for a busy weekend of outdoor events. Rachel Raffinelli is live at the Cinco de Mayo Festival. But first, Brian Brennan is outside the KGW studios at Shred Day. So, Brian, it looks like you're catching a break from the rain. 
Yeah, we just now got a little bit of a break in the rain, so there's nothing to keep you from coming down to Shred Day. We're open to 7 o'clock. Bring your two boxes or your two grocery bags of documents and get things shredded. Looking at the radar right now, the weather is moving by us. We're going to see the rain move into the Cascades, and overall, we're going to see just a scattered shower kind of activity throughout the day. Our next graphic will show you how it looks at Cannon Beach right now. I think they are starting to get those sun breaks and we should see some of those sun breaks later on this afternoon. Our next graphic shows you our current temperatures. It is almost or a little bit over 20 degrees cooler than it was at the same time yesterday. We're in the mid 50s. Our temperatures are not going to change very much as we go into this evening. Looking at our day planner, we're in the mid 50s for a while, but you notice in the afternoon we'll have scattered showers and by evening it should be mostly dry. Uh, that's looking good for a string of dry days ahead with sunny conditions. We won't get quite as hot as yesterday, but it should be pretty nice. It is Cinco de Mayo after all. Rachel Raffinelli joins us live. Rachel. Hi, Brian. Well, I am making some new friends down here at Waterfront Park. Can you guys say hi? hi. much fun. There's a festival going on right now. It opened an hour ago. There's live entertainment, all sorts of food. Bye! Hi! <laughs> all sorts of kids right now. There's a lot of carnival rides and of course all the fun vendors. This is the 33rd annual Cinco de Mayo Fiesta here. It's the largest multicultural festival in the state of Oregon and people come from all over to have some fun. It's open from 11 in the morning to 11 at night through the weekend. Tickets, 10 bucks for adults, six bucks for kids and seniors, and kids six and under are free. Now we met a vendor who came here all the way from California to sell these custom shirts, scarves, and other really unique items. She's been to the festival the past couple of years. She loves it, and she hopes the rain won't stop people from coming to visit. In LA, people would stay in. Here, they're used to the rain, so they'll come out. Um, so I'm not really worried about it, but then it's Friday, so hopefully, I think the weather said it's gonna die down later on tonight, so I'm hoping that'll get better. <laughs> we hope so too. Now keep in mind, if you take the Max, there's that really big Max improvement project going on right now, so you might need to figure out a different way to get downtown. Certainly a lot of people having a lot of fun here at Waterfront Park. Brenda, back to you. Oh, they have such great energy, fun stuff. Thank you, Rachel. And a quick heads up this afternoon for parents with kids at Lake Oswego Junior High School. It's releasing students for the day. The school is just off Boone's Ferry and Country Club Road. Administrators say they found a bomb threat written on a wall in a girl's bathroom this morning. They evacuated all the students to a nearby building. The district says it's a large school, so it's going to take the afternoon to search and make sure that everything is okay. Malala police need your help figuring out who broke into two cars on Tuesday. Take a look at this surveillance video. You can see that man in the black walking around. Then he gets into the white car. Police say he stole IDs. One of the cars was near East Hines Street and Grange Avenue. The other was a few blocks away on North Malala Avenue. Officers say they've seen more car prowls recently. So if you know anything that could help, call Malala police. In Northeast Portland, police are looking for two men who robbed a couple. One guy is armed with a gun. The other has a knife. Sky 8 was over that scene this morning. It happened at Northeast 11th and Summer Street. Police say two men approached a man and a woman. They demanded some of their things and then they walked away. One of the suspects shot the victim's car. Police say he's about 22 years old and had a bandana covering his face. The other suspect wore a white tank top and had a knife. Again, call police if you know anything.